Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today we're out with a, a neat, somewhat unusual German pistol. This is a, an H&K uh, VP70Z. So this is the civilian version of this pistol. There was, of course, a military or police version. Um, and what was notable about the VP70 is that it could have a shoulder stock attached to it at the back, and that would enable it to fire three round bursts at a very high cyclic rate, something like 21 or 2200 rounds per second. Without the stock, uh, even the machine pistol version was limited to single shots. And of course, this is the civilian gun, which is limited to single shots as well. Uh, you'll see down here on the grip, it does uh, say VP70Z. And if we look at the back of the grip, you can see a little bit of a mold mark where there would have been a cutout for the shoulder stock, but there's, there's no cutout there, so you can't attach a stock to this. Now, these were designed in the late 1960s. They went into production in 1970, as you can kind of tell from the name. Uh, they are, in fact, the world's first uh, mass production polymer framed pistol down here, which is a, a bit of an innovation. And I guess the other thing that these pistols are known for on the net is their horrendous staple gun type trigger pull. Uh, and we'll get into that in just a moment. Now, mechanically, this is a very simple gun. It's in 9mm Parabellum, 9mm Luger, and it is a straight blowback design. So to disassemble it, we take this clamp, pull it vertically down, and then just like pretty much every other straight blowback, well, I'll take the magazine out first. We just pull the slide off the back of the frame, and there it is. So like most straight blowback pistols, we have a recoil spring sitting around the barrel. The barrel is fixed in place. We've got this kind of metal cage um, attached to the top of the polymer frame. If we look inside the slide, you can see there's basically nothing in here. Um, the slide is just there for to give you enough mass to work as a, a delayed blowback, or a, a straight blowback. Now this right here, this silver piece, that is uh, the part of the trigger that the trigger mechanism catches. So it's striker fired. So this pulls all the way back. When it gets to the very end, it releases and snaps forward. We can take a closer look at that by disassembling the trigger mechanism. We're going to take this bit at the back, rotate it about 90 degrees, and we can pull out the two components. So this is the firing pin, and it's hollow so that this piece sits right inside it. This spring out here is just uh, a very light, uh, basically it's a safety to prevent the gun from firing uh, if it's dropped. So the, the firing pin never has enough inertia on its own to fire. The main firing pin spring is this one, which is, I believe that's a 12 pound spring. So when it's in the gun, what happens is the trigger mechanism holds this, pulls it, get a good grip on that, pulls it all the way back to there, then the trigger uh, the, the sear drops down, releases this, which snaps forward. The force on the firing pin can overcome this little wimpy spring, and it fires a cartridge. One interesting thing about the fire mechanism on this gun is that the trigger does in fact pull straight back. It's not cammed or pinned anywhere. The trigger here is connected directly to that bar, which is connected to this, and it just pulls that, that firing pin straight back. So pretty simple gun uh, mechanically and very easy to reassemble as well. Just make sure that that's vertical as it goes in. Put that in, and there we go. Back ready to fire. This will be vertical when it's ready to shoot. Now another item of kind of interest, a little bit unusual, is the front sight on this pistol is very wide and has this notch in the middle. The idea there is that the two walls on the side actually create a shadow in the middle, and that shadow is what you treat as your front sight post. So the rear sight is pretty typical, just normal square notch. Um, but that shadow front sight is a bit unusual. Okay. Well, I don't know if you can see it real clearly, but one other interesting element about the VP70 is that it has very deep cut rifling. Um, hopefully you can see that here. But what that does is actually allows gas to blow past the bullet. That reduces the pressure and it reduces the amount of weight necessary in the slide to operate safely. Now it's interesting, we can tell that this is definitely true, that gas is blowing by, by taking a look at the recovered bullets, where you can see that the, 
the uh, grooves, the, the low points in the barrel, don't actually ever touch the bullet. And even more, more interesting than that, there are black scorch marks on the bullet from the gas going past. Uh, you get significantly less muzzle velocity out of a given cartridge in a VP70 than you would in a more typical pistol. Let's go ahead and put that back together. That's all it takes to reassemble. Boom, we're back together, ready to shoot. Uh, magazine on this is also a bit distinctive. It, uh, kind of like the Steyr GB, this is a double stack, double feed magazine, and it holds 18 rounds. So, again, fairly easy to load by hand. And of course, in the machine pistol version, you really need a, a relatively high capacity magazine to make it useful. So, 18 rounds in your three round bursts gives you six trigger pulls. And uh, that, that was about top of the line in the, the early 70s when this came out. So, it does have a heel mag release. And I think we're going to go ahead and do some shooting. Now, being a blowback, kind of one of the, the uh, characteristics of this pistol is that it's, it's sort of a very simple, very durable beat on it, and it'll still always work kind of gun. So we're going to load a real mishmash of ammo in it and see how it performs. Let's go take a look at that. All right, so we picked out these 18 rounds out of kind of a mishmash of ammo. So we've got some lead. Uh, we've got some FMJ, some steel case, some brass case. We've got this kind of odd flat point, a couple of hollow points. And uh, I'm just going to load these all up. And we'll see what happens when I start pulling the trigger. All right, guys, we got 18 rounds of wacky miscellaneous ammo. Our VP70Z. Here we go. Got a dud of some sort. While I'm letting this sit, the trigger on this, as you can see, pulls straight back in. I don't know if you can hear that clicking, but it really feels surprisingly like a staple gun. Um, what you can do, a lot of people just say this is a, a terrible, terrible trigger. And it's certainly not a target pistol trigger, but what it does allow you to do is use this largely as a safety, uh, much like a double action revolver. You can preset the trigger back to about here. There's a fairly evident uh, break point in it. And from here, I just have a slight bit of extra travel before it fires. So much like you can stage a double action revolver pull, you can do the same thing with this. And that makes it easier to fire than you would otherwise expect. No, we had a failure to, f to cycle there. All right, let's keep going. I think we're about halfway through. And that's it. We're out of ammo. So that was almost perfect. We had one round that failed to extract. All right, so that digested all of our goofy ammo pretty well. So we're gonna take it up a notch. We've got a couple of these cartridges. I don't know exactly what happened to them. I think they may have gotten run over by a car or something, but they're really nasty ammo. So we're gonna load these two up and see if the VP70 can digest those too. There we go. All right, probably a dud, maybe a hang fire. Yeah, it fired, but it failed to extract it. and I think we're gonna to need to punch that out with a rod. So even the VP70 isn't perfect, can't handle everything. So overall, the VP70 is, uh, it's an interesting pistol to shoot. I think obviously the, the semi-auto version makes a lot of sacrifices over what you would have had with the original machine pistol. Um, the, the really heavy trigger certainly makes a lot more sense for three round burst. Um, you don't wanna to be touching one of those off accidentally. Um, 
the grip is not bad. The whole thing is fairly top heavy, um, although the weight does keep the recoil down a bit. Um, yeah, the grip is comfortable, but again, high bore axis, fairly top heavy gun. It, it's kind of like a really refined high point, which mechanically is almost exactly what it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tune back into ForgottenWeapons.com for a more early polymer pistols.